Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I set up my monthly layouts for January and February of 2020. I started my January setup by lettering the title for the month using one of my mild liner brush pens and then adding a drop shadow effect using a black brush pen and a black pen. If you'd like a tutorial for this lettering style, you can check it out in my book, Study With Me, which is all about bullet journaling for students and it includes a tutorial for this lettering style. But of course, if you don't want to do that, I also have a slightly less detailed video tutorial called Lettering Title Ideas, which I will link in the cards and description as well. You might be noticing that my monthly setups look quite different from how they've looked before in my Plan With Me videos, and this is kind of a change I've been thinking about making for a while. One, I don't really want to make a Plan With Me video every month anymore, I just feel like those videos have been taking over my channel and altering the way I bullet journal. I think in 2019 I've been doing a lot of bullet journaling styles that are simply what is expected of me, I guess, from the rest of the bullet journal community, as in having a fairly complex monthly setup with a clear theme. I felt like I was doing things just so I would have something to put in my plan with me videos or something to take a picture of for my Instagram, not because I actually wanted to do it or I felt like it would help me keep track of my life and organize it more clearly. For these reasons, I decided to make my January setup very minimal, pretty much focused only on function and keeping a minimal line style that I still find aesthetically pleasing, but doesn't take me too much extra time Besides the title, the only things that will be on this page as part of my monthly setup are one, this set of two tables that I'm titling Mindful Consumption. One of them is for me to track my finances, and the other is for me to track a wish list, because this year I'm going to try to only buy one unnecessary item per month to limit my spending and the amount of mental energy I put into acquiring stuff, which I feel like is far too much considering how little stuff I actually need. Below that, I've got four mini goals, two daily habits, and two weekly habits that I will be tracking and trying to accomplish this month. These align with the goals I set in my 2020 plan with me, which I will link in the cards and description. I find for me personally at least, the best way for me to reach a larger overarching goal is for me to first break them down into manageable steps that seem more actionable and possible to accomplish, and set up habits which are basically just reoccurring tasks. Before moving on to my February setup, let's take a quick commercial break to shout out today's sponsor, Skillshare. Lately, I found Thomas Frank's Productivity Masterclass very informative. I enjoyed the advice about setting up a task list and calendar, as it was really applicable to bullet journaling, even though he's mostly focusing on digital to-do lists. I especially liked the tip about creating a regular reset day. Again, he's talking about a digital to-do list. But that could definitely apply to me, just to make sure all of my trackers are updated and all of my tasks are properly migrated. Besides this course, Skillshare has thousands of other classes about creative and entrepreneurial skills. With a premium membership, you'd get unlimited access to classes and communities. You can get a free two-month trial with the link in the description, and after that, it's less than $10 a month. So once again, thanks Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and now back to my February plan with me. Just like with my January plan with me, I'm starting out by lettering the title for the month using a brush pen, although this time I'm using a Tombow dual brush pen. And it's in pink, because February is Valentine's Day, so we've got to buy into that commercialized notion of love that incorporates the colors pink and red everywhere. But also, I just really like the color pink, so we're gonna go with it. Also, I apologize for how blurry this shot is at times, and how often the top of my head shows up in these sideways shots. Whenever I start filming, it takes me a couple of minutes to get used to not sticking my head all the way forwards, because I have a horrible posture when I'm writing normally. So bear with me while we make it through this segment. Layout wise, this setup is going to be very similar to my January setup. Once again, I'm using that minimal line style that's directly copied from my January setup, which was also directly copied from my March 2019 setup, which if you have not seen yet, I will link my 2019 bullet journal flip through in the cards and description. This mindful consumption setup is pretty much exactly replicated from my January setup. I even flipped back to it to count the width of the boxes, 
But the only change I'm making is that I'm allowing much more vertical space because in my January setup, I felt like I didn't have enough lines to input everything that I wanted to input. Besides that, it's essentially identical. Below that, I have my mini goals and my habits just like I did in January because I felt like this system of breaking down my larger goals worked really well for me. The only change I made is that I'm going to have four daily habits instead of two daily habits and two weekly habits. At this point, I realized that I definitely had not allotted myself enough space to write in my habits on a second column next to my mini goals, so I just whited those out, shortened the wording of my goals, and added those habits in. Since I didn't explain this earlier in my January setup, I think I will explain my ABCD system for labeling my habits right now. Previously, I had used icons to symbolize my habits, but I feel that I need a specific written out version of what exactly the habit is. What are the exact things I have to do in order to consider this habit completed for the day? In the past, I've definitely let my laziness take advantage of the ambiguity of my icon system. For example, if at the beginning of the month I thought of the habit being listen to a French video or podcast today, and I just drew the French flag as the symbol, I would somehow convince myself later on when I was feeling lazy that that symbol just meant I had to interact with the French language in some way, so attending French class or doing my homework was good enough when no, it really wasn't. So by having that system, I can write out in words with details what exactly I want to be doing. And in the smaller space of the habit tracking table, I just write in the letters that correspond with the longer phrases. Below that, I decided to set up a schedule with checkboxes for my driving practice, since one of my goals was to practice for two hours every weekend, and I found that the only way to really get myself to do this was to set up outside accountability by scheduling a lesson with a driving instructor or setting up a specific time with one of my parents. So this is a space for me to write out what my appointment time is, even if I just make it up myself, and check off when I've actually done that practice. The space below that is just three boxes for me to brainstorm what I want to get done during my winter break this February. This includes to-do lists, scheduled events, and just ideas where I can write whatever I want. I'm now going back through and erasing any stray pencil marks, and that is my completed February setup. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to see more bullet journal or plan with me videos, I post new videos every Monday. I also post photos of my bullet journal on my Instagram, which is at studyquill. See you next time!